Amen. We make a miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing, you are here. You are here, touching every heart. So we worship. I worship you. Yes, we do. I worship you. You are here. You are here, healing every life. I worship you. Yes, we do. I worship you, you are here, you are here, and you're turning lives around. I worship you, yes, I worship you. You are here, God, bending every heart. I worship you, yeah. I worship you. Oh, and you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. 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 And even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Tú siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Tú siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Sobrando, tú siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando, tú siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando, milagroso, abres camino, cumples promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. Oh, milagroso, abres camino, cumples promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. We make a oh, we make a miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, that is who you are. 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 That is who you I think I, good, we did it right, didn't we, Susan? 
I push the right button. Sometimes I push the wrong button. My wife, my wife reminds her of that sometimes. You push the wrong button, mister. Man, it's good to have all of you here. How many of you know God has no favorites? We're all His favorites. I'm telling you, I love it. You know, God is not against you. He's for you. Hey, hey, God's not picking on you. He's picking you out to be something special. That's why He won't leave you alone. God, can't you leave me alone for one day? No, because I'm picking you out for something special. Some of y'all in here need to know that you're not leftovers. You're keptovers. God, I thought I should have been out of the earth a long time ago. And some of you tried to take your life. God said, no, 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 you're not a leftover. You're a keptover. I'm keeping you for a purpose. I'm keeping you because I want to show my glory to you. That's what the Lord led me. By the way, i I, I got to tell you, the worship and songs were awesome. And, and, and like any good servant of the Lord, she, she felt like I was going to speak on the river, and, and the Lord changed it on me, but it still applies. So I'm so proud of her. But man, oh man, what a freedom in the worship tonight. Amen? But I tell you, God wants to reveal His glory to us. You see, in America, there's three types of churches. There's three types of churches that we've found as we've traveled. We pastored for 26 years, and now we've been traveling for 22 years. That makes us seasoned. Not old. Seasoned. Um, but as we travel, we find basically there's three types of churches. And they're all loved by God, and they're going to go to heaven. There's the, the mercy church that believes in the power of Jesus Christ. They believe in the cross of Jesus but uh, the mercy of God is a mercy, a presence and power and purpose, personality of Jesus Christ over them. Do you know that unsaved people have the mercy of God on them tonight? I don't know who it is that you despise or that you can't stand because they hurt you so much or they abandoned you or they uh, left you or forsook you. I don't know who that is. But do you know the night tonight that God loves those people and His mercy is still on them? Do you know you've never breathed the breath in your life from the time you came out of your mother's womb that God's mercy was not upon you? Do you know it was God that stopped somebody from killing you one time or stopped you from being in an accident or stopped you from taking... Do you know that that was the mercies of God? Not the anger of God. Not God saying, I'll show you. But the mercies of God, we all have that on us. And there are churches we've gone to that have the mercy of God on them, but they only live in that one dimension. How many of you understand that we are 3D people? You have a spirit, soul, and body, right? And some of y'all won't even watch the old kind of TVs anymore. You've got to ha have high definition. You've got to have all those dimensions. But see, it's sad that I, we see Christians that are only living in the one dimension. They're living by the mercies of God. Oh, well, He can't change me. He can't deliver me. He can't free me from this habit. He can't heal me from this disease. But I'm just going to at least go to heaven. That's a one-dimensional living. God, you've called us to live in more than one dimension. And then we find churches that are, are, are in the second dimension, and they still have the first dimension, and that's, that's grace churches. Grace churches and grace people are the people who understand that the power and presence and, and, and purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ is inside of them. Lord, I want to thank you. Your mercies aren't just on me, but your grace is in me. Now listen, people, grace is not the unmerited favor of God. I know that's the big definition. For years it went through the body of Christ. Unmerited favor of God. It is true that we don't merit the favor of God. But grace is far more powerful than an unmerited favor of God on me. Grace is the very presence of His Son within me. How many of you know Jesus Christ is the grace of God? And see, when Jesus Christ came into me, He didn't just give me a ticket that I can pull out of my pocket at the last day and show St. Pete and get in heaven. See, I'm not concerned about getting into heaven anymore. I've already got a place reserved for me because of Jesus Christ. But when I got saved, it wasn't Jesus giving me a passport to go to heaven and get out of this earth. It was Jesus entering into my life. And guess what? He brought His power, His personality, His nature, His spirit, His abilities, His anointings. He brought all of that with Him. Jesus didn't leave anything on the outside. People, when He moved into you, He brought His stuff. Some of you haven't given Him enough room to move in, but He's there. And so, God, I want to thank you that your grace is not just a mercy that covers me in my weakness and says I still can go to heaven even though I'm a miserable, weak person. But, God, your grace is the power of Jesus in me to heal me, deliver me, and set me free so I don't have to be a weak person anymore. I can be a strong man or woman of God. Lord, I receive that kind of grace tonight. And then there's the third dimensional churches or the third dimensional people that understand to live in the presence of the glory of God. 
You see, the mercy is a, a love and power and presence of Jesus on me. The grace is the presence and love and power of Jesus Christ in me. By the way, any of you that have ever confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have that grace in you right now. And I'm going to tell you, you're not going to lose that grace. He's going to make sure you take it with you all the way to heaven. Some of y'all are afraid you ain't going to make it to heaven. That keeps you weak. That keeps you confused. You've got to get over that fear. My God wants to keep you even more than you want to be kept. And I thank God for that. And so now, the grace, the glory churches, though, are the people that understand the presence, power, and, and, and purpose of Jesus Christ is not only in me, but He's ready now to move through me to touch somebody else. God, you've called this church to move into the third dimension of glory. We're not here to have great services. We're not here just to get our needs met on a special night when some kind of special guy comes in or a special lady and they can blow on us and spit on us and spray us and uh, throw air on us and do crazy stuff on us. God, you're not here for that kind of stuff. You're here tonight to change our lives in such a way that we become men and women who now can do what we always depended on you to do for us. Instead of always needing to get somebody to pray for me, I now become somebody that can pray for someone. Instead of always needing that prophecy from God to make me feel better, I now can move in the spirit of the prophecy of God and prophesy to somebody else. Instead of always needing another healing in my body, I thank you, Jesus, that I can be used of Jesus to bring healing into other people now. Some of y'all need to try that. Some of you guys back there, you need to try laying hands on somebody, not this way like we used to, but laying hands on them in a nice way and pronounce healing into their lives. You would be amazed that Jesus would heal somebody through your, through your prayers and through your heart. So God, let us become glory people. You know, uh, one thing I know about the, the, the glory of God versus the anointing. Now, we need the anointing. The anointing of God is here tonight. The anointing of God is a special presence of God that enables us to do something supernatural beyond our natural abilities. Some of y'all say, well, I'm so tired, I'm so weary, I don't know if I'll ever change, I don't know if I'll ever kick this habit. You know, I understand that, I understand where you are, but see, there's an anointing of God that's given to every person that knows Jesus Christ. And that anointing is an ability of God to break every power that's keeping you down being just a mere human being. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not just mere humans trying to make it to heaven. You are, you are anointed by the Holy God in heaven and empowered to become somebody that's instead of being a spectacle all your life, you now can become spectacular for God. Lord, change us and let us become spectacular for you. And not let everybody think we're some kind of spectacle to be gawked at because we can't get our life together. Lord, let the glory of God Tonight, show us. See, the anointing of the Holy Spirit enables you to do supernatural stuff. But watch this. Be careful with this. When the glory of God comes, and He's here tonight, brother. God is here. Now, the glory of God, uh, gold dust coming down. How are you? My name's John Jenkins. We'll turn it off. I can do this too. 
the, the thing that makes us different tonight isn't that we dress funny and we look like these weird Christians who all have all this special dress and then we have all our special words. Do you know that there are people who come into churches wanting to know the presence and power of Jesus and they hear all your theological words and they have no idea what you're talking about? God, let our words not be so religious and so doctrinal. Let our words be filled with power and love. And tonight, God wants to reveal that to you. And He wants us to know tonight that He's here to, to totally transform and change our lives, that we are never, ever the same again. You see, the glory of God sometimes, if you, if you read in the Bible, Solomon, the glory of God says to, about Solomon when he prayed in the temple, to dedicate the temple. It said the glory of God came into their midst. And guess what? Everybody fell on their face. They couldn't do any more work. See, when the glory of God people and delivering people and casting out devils, it won't be us. When the glory of God comes, it's Him. And God, we don't want your stuff. We want who you are. And, and, and the Bible's filled with scriptures about the glory of God. And I don't know if I'll... I'll in fact... Uh, Susan, I'm going to skip some of those scriptures anyway. I'm just going to flow tonight. So if you, if you find something you can keep up with me, that's fine. But God... <clears throat> it says that uh, Jesus is, is, is uh, revealing through history that nobody really knows about. This mystery has been hidden hidden. The mystery, this is my can't work. Mystery, the mystery is uh, something that Paul said will be revealed to those who are mature. Now, see, I don't know. I don't think that means old in age. I just mean, I think it means mature in the Lord and they want more of God rather than just being saved. See, I pray to God that you guys, all of you here, will, will want to be more than saved, more than just rescued. I pray to God that you'll want to become like Jesus. We go to churches, and there's so many people. They, they, they want all the benefits. They want what the cross does for them. People in the body. They don't want the way of Jesus. They don't want to become like Jesus. They just want to get what Jesus has. We're going to try another one here. Hallelujah. Nothing's going to stop us, is it, David? Praise God. Here we are again. <clears throat> oh, that makes me feel like i got a radio voice. You don't want me to go southern preaching, do you? And the Lord said, <laughs> you ever heard those guys? You can't hear anything but Oz in their message. Oh, <laughs> y'all. Yeah, yeah. A radio face. That's cute. That's cute. You can see me on radio every week. <laughs> the glory, the glory of God wants to come into your life personally and to your family in such a way that he kind of disarms you from trying to work things out. And he takes away your so-called strength so you can just yield to his power. Do you know that when you try to change your unsaved loved ones, they're only temporarily changed because you forced them? But if you let God change them, oh my gosh, it'll be a for eternity kind of thing. The glory of God. There's, there's examples in Scripture of the results of the glory of God. I know in one place uh, uh, Jesus said this in Matthew 13. He's speaking to the disciples. And they said, Jesus, why do you always speak in parables? Can't you just talk plain Arabic? They would have said English if, if it was today. And Jesus said, I'll tell you why I speak in parables. Because it's given for you to understand the mysteries. But I didn't want everybody to understand the mystery at this time. And it's the same mystery that Paul was talking about. But he says to them, but you need to know something. Your eyes have been blessed so that you can see and, under and see and understand the mystery of God. And your ears have been anointed, he says in Matthew 13, so that you can hear what the mystery is and understand it. And your heart, brother, has been anointed so that you can receive and understand and live in the power of that mystery. And then he said this, watch this. Jesus said to those disciples, he says, for even the prophets in the Old Testament are jealous of you because they wish they could see and understand and hear what you guys understand. 
And my problem tonight is that many of us Christians are saved just enough that we are going to heaven, and that's wonderful, and I'll see you up there. But we're not making anybody jealous because some of us in here don't even understand the power of the mystery of Christ. And the mystery isn't, will I ever get to heaven and when is he coming? But as Pastor was saying, the mystery is, Paul said it in first, uh, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. Paul said it this way. He said, for this mystery that has not been known for the ages has been revealed unto us. And the mystery is this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Say that with me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. One more time. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Now listen, most Christians in America, especially us Southerners, we think that's Christ in me, the hope to get to glory one day after I get out of this mess. It's not speaking about getting out of the earth. It's Christ in me, the hope of having His full glory, power, anointing, and supernatural manifestations inside of me while I'm in the earth so other people can be healed and touched and delivered. Some of us, we need to quit. I mean, don't ever quit thanking God that you're saved and that He's restored you, but don't limit it to that. You've got loved ones. You've got family members that right now maybe hate your guts, but if they see the glory of God and you can touch them with the glory of God, God will turn them around. We're not here to be saved just to go to heaven. We're here to be fully redeemed so that other people can go to heaven. Other people can get healed. And, and, and the, the mystery is revealed in us. Christ is in us right now. And when He came within us, He brought His glory. It's 2 Corinthians 3.18 that Paul's talking about. Uh, that we now look through a glass. Uh, to me, I, I change it to a mirror. We look through a mirror, but most of you will get up in the mornings or sometime during the day, and you'll look in a mirror, and you're wanting to see the presence of God, but the first thing you see is your own reflection, and that just gets you angry and frustrated and mad because you don't believe in you. Some of you in here, the one thing God's going to do this week is help you love you again because you've been your worst enemy. You've been against yourself. You've been afflicting yourself. You've been attacking yourself. Woe is me. I've always been a bad dude, and I'm going to be a bad dude the rest of my life. I just pray God has mercy on me. Look through the mirror. Don't look at the mirror. Want to see Jesus so much that you look beyond who you are so you can see who He is. And Paul says, as you look through this glass and you start seeing Jesus, I'm through seeing John Jenkins. I'm through trying to make him better. I want to see Jesus Christ. And as I, as I look beyond my own inabilities or my own skills or whatever, I look beyond that and I want this Jesus. And every time I see Jesus, the Bible says, as I see him, I will be changed from glory to glory until I'm in his image. And Jesus, I want to praise you. I'm not impressed with people that go around uh, trying to give out an image like I, I want the image of the world. You'd be surprised how many Christians, they dress like the world because they love world image. God, I don't want my image to be known by the world. I want the image of Jesus in me to be seen by the world. Let it not be self-image. Let it be Jesus' image. And so as that glory begins to take over my life, he says he changes us. Not from sin to sin, misery to misery, bondage to bondage, sadness to sadness. But He changes us from glory to glory. From one place where I do something special for you, and now I want to change you into a greater place where I can do something even more special for you. God, thank You that You don't leave us at the same level ever. You're ready to take us up to the high places. There's a glory of God in this place tonight. that overtakes, watch here, listen to me, some of y'all are trying to uh, conquer some habits, and you're trying to, uh, mental powers, mind powers, uh, the power of the Most High, and all of that is good. And God, we're, we're, we just want to overcome this stuff. We're tired of falling back into these traps. And not every trap a uh, person in here, it has to do with drugs or alcohol or sexual pervert. Some people's traps are fear, self-rejection, self-hate, pity partying, always seeing the dark side rather than, than the side that God's on. God, help us tonight to understand this. There is a glory of God in this building right now, brothers, and it's not, it's not for the people that have read their Bibles more than you or prayed more than you or been saved longer than you or didn't do all the stuff we did. It's not for them only. It's for every one of us. And there's a glory of God that overtakes 
I mean by force, overtakes any places in your life that was ever captivated or imprisoned or controlled by satanic powers or even by other people's powers over us when they rule over us with their mind and, and, and their uh, sorcery or whatever. There's a glory of God in this house right now. And, and when you guys walked in and, and saw these people walked in, I, I started seeing the glory of God just immediately overtaking any place where Satan ever had you captive. And I mean to tell you, breaking it free, not just, not just uh, uh, giving you temporary relief. I mean breaking those powers. I love the scripture in the Old Testament where it says he breaks the snare of the fowler. The snare of the fowler. The fowler is, is, is symbolic of Satan always catching you in a trap. See, Satan has been trying to catch you guys and all of us in a traps for years. But see, I don't serve a Jesus who just opens a trap and says, hey, you're free. Go out and try again later. And then he leaves the trap. I serve a Jesus that says, you know what? I'm not going to let that trap catch you again. I'm going to break that thing. I'm going to break the traps that's been trapping you. I'm not going to let them catch you anymore. I'm going to destroy them because I want you to stay free. That's the kind of Jesus we have. And this glory that's in here right now is for, is for some of the seasoned saints, the glory of God that, that captivates and breaks prison doors open, breaks chains off of us, breaks bondages and habits and <clears throat> controlling spirits that's been in our life. Jesus says, I'm coming as a mighty warrior and I'm going to break that thing free and set you free once and for all in your life. Because you will know the truth, not Scripture. That word when it says you shall know the truth, it, it means some Scripture, but it really means you shall know Jesus Christ who is the truth and the truth who you know will make you free. Listen, set you free. Set you free is, I, I've seen prisoners come out, I've ministered to, to a heart hardcore murderers and rapists and they got out of prison somehow and they were set free but it didn't really change them but what jesus wants to do brothers not just set you free he wants to come in on the inside and remake you and heal what got messed up in there and make you so free that you won't ever get caught in that thing again ever see he makes us he remakes us into new people and that's the glory that's here tonight but there is a glory also that over I don't even know what, what order we're in, but glory that overrides any religious ordinances, any laws. See, some of us, well, the reason we, we weren't that in love with churches, we go to churches and we just come out of carrying balls and chains of our wickedness and our sins and our failures, and then the church wants to throw balls and chains on you of religious ordinances. And God, we, we're tired of carrying balls and chains. We'd like to know what real freedom is. We want to know what the real true grace is, not some religious form that wears us out. And, and by the way, religion always points the finger at you and says you're not worthy. You can go to some churches in America tonight and they'll still tell you you're not worthy. You need to get right with God. And we want to be right with God. But you won't get right with God thinking that you're not worthy. You'll get right with God knowing that He's made you worthy. See, He's made us worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. But I call on the glory of God in this house tonight that overrides any ordinances, any rules, any legislations, anything ever written or opinions or theologies or even doctrines of men that keep making us feel like we have to impress God or do something to make God love us. Lord, we come again. I thank you in the name of Jesus for the grace of God that gives me more power to be holy than being afraid of going to hell. I used to be afraid of going to hell, and that didn't make me holy. As soon as daylight came, you know, I'd repent on wet on Worry about going to hell, get up in the sun shining the next day and not worry. I'd be the same way. But when God's glory came in, and He said, I'll override those ordinances. By the way, the verse in the Bible that justifies that is Colossians 2.14. It says of Jesus, having erased, having erased all the handwriting of any ordinance or legislation that was ever against us as children of God. That was contrary to us feeling like we're worthy of God. See, I've talked to several people in here this week. One of the things the enemy's been doing is making you feel like you're not even worthy to receive from God. You're not worthy to be blessed. You're not worthy to receive this stuff that that guy's talking about. That's a lie straight out of hell. Because number one, everything God gives you, is, it isn't even based on your worthiness. It's based on the worthiness of His Son, Jesus, not yours. The reason I'm saved tonight isn't that I ever became worthy. It's because Jesus is worthy. He saved me out of His worthiness, brother. And so these, th this, this glory of God tonight overrides that because the Bible says 
having erased all the handwriting of the ordinances that was ever against us, contrary to us, by nailing them to the cross. When Jesus shed his blood, he didn't just uh, hide them, he erased them. It says he erased these ordinances. Brother, if you were to go to God tonight and ask him to forgive you for what you did five weeks ago, God would say, I don't know what you're talking about. Because my blood forgave you, my blood washed that thing out. It's no longer part of yours. Don't even bring it up again. Because we're free in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for this glory that can come over my life at any moment. It isn't that I've been praying more or asking more. I want to do that more because I love God so much. But there's times where the glory of God's come over my life and I was just being a plain old human being. And I thank God for those times. Sometimes He gives you His glory not because you've deserved it, but because He wants to impress you. Are you kidding me? God wants to impress me? Yes. He would love to impress you with how great He is. you got to be healed. Somebody in here has got some anger and frustration with God because you felt like He disappointed you. He didn't meet a need that you really needed Him to do, you thought. And God hasn't mad at you and He's not angry, but He's going to come and overwhelm you with His love tonight. And He's going to prove to you that I didn't reject you. That He's faithful and true. You know, one thing I learned in my life, people, whenever I pray and God seems to give a no, no, no is not a rejection from God. It's usually a redirection. Sometimes, brother, I don't pray exactly right. I think I do, but then God says, no, that's not the answer. But then He always gives a redirection that's far greater. Trust God tonight that He has your best interest in mind and He's not, he's not interested in rejecting you and saying no to you just because He wants to teach you a lesson. But His blood erased every handwriting of ordinance that was against me. And therefore, right now, tonight, guys, we don't have to read our Bibles. To, I mean, we, we do, but you don't have to read your Bible to get this. You don't have to pray and sweat. Jesus is saying, I want you to know my blood. My blood has erased everything that's against you. And if you'll let it, the blood of Jesus will erase even what you have against you. How you judge yourself so bad. Let the blood of Jesus do it tonight. There's a glory of God in this house right now that wants to overwhelm, overwhelm every place in your life. When I listen to this, ladies especially, but men too, the glory of God that wants to overwhelm any places that ever got infected and dirtied and tarnished by the hands of evil or wicked people that hurt you or harmed you, abused you, molested you. There's a glory of God in this house tonight that wants to overwhelm any places inside of your life that you have even brought dirt to your own life. There's a glory of God here tonight that just wants to overwhelm you. What that means is you think you're stuck in that. You think you're no good. You think you're less than great and holy. But I want to so overwhelm you. How does God overwhelm you? By His goodness. Do you know the Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads men to repent? You think we have to preach hellfire sermons and get them all frayed and shaken. I, I was raised up in that stuff. And I'd repent and run to the altar. And my dad was the preacher. I got saved five nights in a row. That's the kind of church we were in, man. We didn't believe you could stay saved. We believed you had to get saved over and over and over and over again. And, you know, God's bigger than that, people. God wants to come in here tonight, some of you guys and, and some of us. He, he just wants to overwhelm us. This isn't Pentecostal stuff. He's not going to make you speak in tongues. He'd like for you to, but he ain't going to make you. This isn't about speaking in tongues. This is about God overwhelming my life and removing every debris, every piece of trash that ever came up on the beach of my life by the tides of my past. And it keeps bringing up that ugly seaweed and that ugly half-eaten squid stuff. God, I want to thank you for the glory of God that washes that stuff away and it can't ever come again because you're an overwhelming God. Your presence is so overwhelming in my life. The enemy has no hope to even speak to me and it register anything. Brother John, now forgive me, I get religious when people, Brother John, the devil's been talking to me all day. I said, my gosh, what are you listening to him for? Why are you talking to him? He's not even in your camp. Brother John, I feel like I've been going through hell. I said, well, that's good. 
They said, no, you don't understand. I've been going through hell. I said, that's good. Because if you're going through hell, that means you're on your way out. Don't stay there. Get on out. Let's quit being babies. <laughs> Though I walk through the shadow of the, uh, the valley of the shadow of death, not death. I'm coming here tonight for my brother and sister right here that I love dearly and I've known them for several years. Come in here tonight, oh glory of God, and overwhelm their whole family environment, their whole family situation, even the extended family. Some that have gone A W O L on God and left the left the kingdom as far as their person personality, knowing Jesus. God, come and overwhelm the whole family and cause there to be such a drastic transformation and change and bringing people back into the order of God. Come and overwhelm them with your presence in such a way that even tonight, before they can go to bed, they get, they just got to have some times of rejoicing and praising God because of the overwhelm presence of the Almighty God. Overwhelm us so much, God, that, you know, you've seen those commercials lately, haven't you, those Twizzler things? They get the big, mean people. They get a lady boxer and a man, and they say, we can make you laugh. And they, you know, those little licorice things that are strawberry, and they come and tickle your little, and you're, you're trying to be mad, and all of a sudden, <laughs> God, come and uh, Twizzler us tonight. Come and put the Twizzler on us tonight with your those frowns off our face. Let who Jesus is in us come out through our face tonight. Hallelujah. Do you love them? My wife does too. You guys ought to get together and go to Dollar General and buy you a few packs. There's the glory of God. Amen. You know, God's been visiting us every night by telephone, hasn't He? That's awesome. <laughs> That's so awesome. I don't care. <laughs> it's just awesome. But there, there is a glory of God that, uh, I'll just put it this way, it overrides. It's like the, the, the chief justice overriding any legislation that somebody wrote against you. There's a glory of God in this house tonight, Jason, that overrides any curses ever put on you by someone or by the devil himself. There's some of you that think your life is just one big curse. I want to tell you there's a glory of God that says I override that. I break that power of the curse, and I'm going to cause you to become one of my blessings. You will not any longer be a curse in this earth. You will not any longer be cursed by people. I won't let their curses land on you. You know you, know you don't have to drink the poison that people offer it to you, right? You don't have to drink it. But see, we've got to understand that Jesus became a curse for us that he might break the power of the curse. I'm never going to receive another curse in my life. I've had people threaten me, prisoners. Uh, when I go, well, I'm going to. Uh, they, they think they were powerful in the satanic world. I'm going to put a curse on you. I said, you're not going to put a curse on me. The curse won't even land on me. I don't know where that curse is going to go, but it ain't going to come on me, brother. Because you know what? I, not because I'm cocky or I'm something, but because Jesus in me has set me free from any kind of curse. Y'all need to quit living under what Daddy told you when you was a kid. You know, my dad said I'd never be anything, and he said I'm rotten to the core. You know what? In the name of Jesus, I break that curse over you right now. You don't have to live under any kind of curse. Even when other kids said things to you when you were growing up, and sometimes we live under that. Kids can be so vicious sometimes. Father, I don't live under anybody's curse that they put on me. Because, Jesus, you've now made my life become a blessing for you. And there's the glory of God in this house. It says, I'm going to free you from anything at all that ever ruled you, that ever was a part of curse over your life. Because He loves you. When He said to Israel, He said, you know, Balaam tried to curse you, but I wouldn't listen to his curse. In fact, I turned his curse into a blessing for you. And they said, Jesus, why? Did, did I do something right? He said, no. And, and you didn't do anything wrong either. He says, the reason I turned his curse into a blessing for you is simply that I love you. Y'all need to get this in your hearts tonight. He's not, he, God's not trying to fight with you. If you want to fight with God, listen, you guys that maybe sometimes you're saying, man, I'm too tough, I'm going to fight. Your arms aren't long enough to fight with God. He will beat you up. But He ain't going to do that. He loves you. The only one that's ever loved you more than anybody and hadn't two times you, hadn't abandoned you, hadn't betrayed you, the world that hasn't really done that is God. Because He just loves you. Yeah, but Brother John, you don't know what I've done. You don't know who I am. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you've done, but God does. 
And do you know that he already decided years ago before you were even born, he has enough love and redemption to cover you no matter how bad you became? You can't make God run out of grace just because you're a hellion on wheels. He's got more grace than you can use up. I thank Him for that. There is a transforming grace of God right now moving in this congregation. It's the same glory of God it's the same glory of God that Jesus used when he changed the water into wine. In fact, the Bible says this was the first act of his glory. And there's people in here tonight, your life has become like stagnant water, like water with no power, water with no fragrance, water with no odor. You become like just water. And God says, I want to bring my glory that's going to touch something inside of you and change you into new wine. You're going to have a new power, a new ability to enjoy victory. There's people in here, you're going to heaven, but your life has been mundane. Your life has been so-so. Your life has been, oh, well, I, I just pray I'll get there in time. And God says, I want to bring a glory that causes you to so enjoy life again. And to so be able to even enjoy yourself again. I want to change you from water into wine. There's a transcending glory of God in this house. The transcending glory in the Bible is where the disciples were locked up in a room and they were paralyzed with fear. And all of a sudden, Jesus appears on the other side of that door. He didn't open the door. He didn't unlock the door. He just appeared on the other side of the door. And some of you have had Jesus blocked out because you feel unworthy. Most people, when they block Jesus out, it isn't that they hate his guts. Some of them don't understand when they'll block him out. But most people block him out because they don't feel that he would be coming to their place. There's God in here right now that wants to transcend and cause the spirit and the power and the presence of Jesus to come inside where you've been feeling so paralyzed, so locked up, so tormented and in fear and afraid to get out there and live your life. I've, I've ministered to prisoners that were afraid to get back out into public, and I understood them because they didn't know if they could cope with public and adapt in public again. But there is a glory of Jesus Christ here tonight that says, I want to come right into the place where you've been locked up in your life. Whatever locked you up, I want to come in there and unlock it. And I want to show you my presence. You know, if Jesus has to, he'd come into your room tonight and say, I want you to see my wounds. I'll show you my wounds like he did that night. You can look at my wounds. These are, these are what I have because I wanted to heal you. Jesus, let glory come inside of people's homes tonight. Some of you need to believe this for your loved ones that are maybe living in another city or they don't even live in your home, but they, they've locked Jesus out of their life right now. You know some people that have just locked him out. They don't have any room for Je Jesus. Sometimes we believe that only when they invite you and they humble themselves and fall on their faces, then maybe you'll come. Do you know that Jesus wants to appear to people that aren't even looking for him? He probably came to you when you really wasn't looking for Him. Jesus, let Your glory come in tonight and unlock us. Come inside where we've been captivated and limited and paralyzed with our fears. There is also a translating glory. And it's the same glory that happened when Philip was preaching and he preached to the Ethiopian, and he, the Ethiopian received the Lord and was baptized. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, brother, without any realization of time, he, uh, Philip was 32 miles away. God translated him. I'm not speaking about translation as far as English. To sp that was a beautiful song, by the way. I'm not speaking about translation as far as language. I'm speaking that God took a man that was in one place, and within seconds, he was 32 miles away. Some of y'all think you're stuck in your situation. Well, we've been this way, and it's been this way ever since we did that. We made that mistake way back there, and that's why we're still suffering for it today. And, 
We're always going to be poor. We're always going to just barely hang on. We're always going to have complications because of what happened in our family. I say in the name of Jesus Christ, there is a translating glory of Jesus that wants to come to your life right now and instantly get you somewhere way ahead of that. Way ahead. The disciples were in that boat that night, and I, I tell you, it was a bad storm, and they were full of fear, brother. And all of a sudden, they saw Jesus walking on the water. Now, this is a, there's two different situations for that. They saw Jesus walking on the water, and, and, and the Bible says in John 6, they invited Jesus into their boat. That would be a good idea, by the way, you know? Some of y'all been in a bad storm. It'd be good to say, hey, Jesus, you want to go through this storm with me? Let's go through it together. You know, He already is with you. He never leaves nor forsake you. But in that case, they invited Jesus into the boat. And the Bible says in John 6, 21, I believe it is, it says, as soon as Jesus stepped into the boat, they were at the land where they needed to be. I don't know how many yards or if it's a couple miles. Because these guys were rowing, and every time they tried to row, they'd go backwards. The wind was so bad, they weren't making progress. But something happened when Jesus got into the boat, and they turned it over to him. Boom! They're at their land. You don't believe it can be that quick, do you? You don't believe you can be free once and for all. You don't believe Jesus can set you on the haven of your promises from God. He can do it in a second. Jesus, come into our boat. Come into my boat. And you take over, my God. He can translate us from one place to another place. And you think, well, we've got to learn these scriptures and we've got to repent, we've got to fast, we've got to pray. All of that stuff is awesome when God leads you to do it. But it's not so awesome when you feel like that's what you have to do to get a favor from God. That grieves God that you think you'll get favors from Him by whipping yourself. I love you in the corner, brother. Jesus, come into that brother's boat. And let this season right now be the one where he and any one of his loved ones land right where you want them. Let them quit struggling and, 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 and being tossed backwards and forwards. But let it be determined by the Lord that he will land where God will. Some of y'all think you can steer your boat better than Jesus. You can't. You already know that, don't you? You've run into bridges and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Marges. There's also, I love this one. Listen to this. There's a transfiguring glory. I wish God would come and transfigure me and change the figure. You know what I mean? Some people say, Brother John, you out of shape. I said, No, no, no. Uh, round is a shape. Isn't it? Round's a shape. I got shape. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm balanced. The bubble's in the middle. That's a balanced man right there. What are you laughing at, Dave? I look just like you inside of this. You know why I put this extra on so my wife won't be uh, jealous and insecure of women looking at me? I put this on for her sake, brother. And if you believe that, I got some property I want to sell you in Iceland. <laughs> Yeah. Jesus is on that mountain. And the disciples are there and they saw me. Uh, Elijah and Moses. What a deal. And all of a sudden, there's a glory that's so bright. And they think it's on Jesus, but it's not on him. It was in him. See, Jesus isn't like the S-U-N and he just re or the moon in the solar system and he reflects the sun. He is the sun. And the glory of God, brother, that was in Jesus came out through his clothes, through his body, and it was so bright that even the disciples fell on their faces like they did. I want God to bring that kind of glory into your life where when people see you, they don't see your shadows and what's overshadowed you all your life. It's time for God to heal us in such a way that we don't show people the shadows of what happened to us or what we did. It's time for us to be so healed that the glory of Jesus in us shows them how great He is. 
And I want the glory of Jesus today to help you realize that no matter what, listen to me carefully, no matter what condition your body is in, years ago in the 70s, they sang the song, What Condition My Condition Was In. Some of you would remember that. Some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. But listen to me. God wants you to understand. It never has been about what condition your body is in. It's always been about what position your heart is in. My body could be crippled. I could be in a wheelchair. I could be in a wheelchair. And I, I tell you this, not cockiness, but I'm going to tell you by the power of God, even if I'm in a wheelchair, I will lay my hands on people and they will get healed. Some of y'all punish God when you have a headache. Well, I can't pray for people. i got a headache. Why punish God? Because even though you're sick, God in you is not sick. And it's not your power, it's His power. And it's my job and privilege to make sure that people see a glory that, when I say this, transfigures, that means goes beyond my physical abilities or disabilities. His glory goes beyond my physique. So God, I want to thank you that we're going to be used more to bring healing to people. And these days, while we're waiting on healings in our own bodies, we're going to be healers in Jesus' name because the glory of God in us that is not going to leave us is ready to move through us and touch other people, Dave, and heal them even though I need healing. I believe some of you would get healed physically if you'd just start laying hands on other people that need to be healed. Because the Bible says whatever you give, you're going to receive it. Some of you would become encouraged and not have to fight depression every other day if you'd start ministering to other people that are depressed and need help. I believe a lot of the key to our particular kinds of healings we need is by our desire to touch other people with the same thing we need. And when Jesus does that, we receive it back many fold. God, I want to thank you for the transfiguring glory of Jesus tonight. That is greater than what, what's going on in my body or my mind or my spirit. And there's two more I feel I want to share tonight. There's a resurrecting glory. There's a glory that when Jesus saw Lazarus, saw the grave, and he wept, he wasn't weeping because, oh, no, he's dead. I believe mainly he was weeping because of people unbelief. I think he was weeping over their unbelief more than he was Lazarus because he knew he was going to raise Lazarus. He already told him he's not really dead. He's just sleeping. But there is a glory of God. Listen to me, people. There's a glory of God in this building right now that will resurrect things that have died inside of you. Some of us, our hopes die because our wife or our kids, or we lost something, and so we just let all that stuff die. Some of us, our, our dreams have died. Some of us, our confidence that God can ever use us because we slipped up and we had a, a, a bad slip up and we think God's through with us. You, there's so many ways that things die. Sometimes our ministry seems to die right in front of us that you've given to us, God. But I want you guys to understand something tonight. Every kind of death, whether physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, family, every kind of death there is in this life has an ear to hear the voice of the resurrection and the life. And I don't care how dead your family looks, how dead your finances look, how dead your life is. I don't care what died. I'm telling you, Jesus is here tonight with His glory. And He would like to raise it back up and give you life again. And He'd like to raise you up out of death so much that you won't go back into the tombs and dwell there like the demoniac. You know, you have to be crazy to go back and dwell in the tombs when Jesus has given you resurrection life. God, come in here tonight and resurrect some dreams and desires and families. Resurrect hope again. God, and some of the people in here, resurrect the anointing again. Resurrect the prophetic touch of God again. I carefully say this. I love being in Foursquare Gospel. I've been in it almost all my life. We've been in and out as far as going into other branches of ministry, too, and we love that. But one thing I really regret if I ever see Foursquare try to so sophisticate the Holy Ghost. 
and making a cultural product of our comfort. God, may we release the Holy Ghost to be the Holy Ghost. I don't always call him Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I do that. I do call him Holy Spirit. But, you know, when I was growing up, he was Holy Ghost. <laughs> he was somebody reverenced. <laughs> But God, let there be such a resurrection of the power of God in this place that we never box Jesus in. We never image Him in to our small-minded expectations. I'm going to say to my brothers and sisters all in here, Jesus is so much bigger than your whole sphere of life and what you've gone through. He's so much bigger. And His whole heart is to get you out of that box where the enemy says that's going to be you the rest of your life. That isn't going to be you. You're about to see Jesus Christ break that box open. And you're going to be able to move forward in the things of God like you never have before. The last one is this. I believe with all my heart there's a healing glory of God in this house tonight. I love Christians that are dedicated to the Lord. They come to the Lord and they serve the Lord and they praise the Lord and they raise their hands no matter what. And yet some of those Christians have afflictions or infirmities or maybe a disease or maybe some kind of disorder in their physical bodies, and yet they still praise God and call Him Jesus. But I believe there's a Lord here tonight, the Lord of healing, who wants His glory to touch your bodies and heal you. But, Brother John, I believe this is old age, and I have to have this because I'm old. I don't read that in Scripture. I understand getting older. Somebody asked me the other day, you want to get older? I said, heck yeah, that's better than the other thing. I don't want to die. I'm never going to act old, but I do want to get old. My wife wished I'd just act mature, let alone old. <laughs> Teresa, it wasn't that funny. <laughs> Listen. If it's an ingrown toenail, Jesus wants to heal it. If it's four-stage cancer, Jesus wants to heal it. If it's, if it's lung diseases because you smoked all your life, Jesus doesn't want to punish you and make you die of cancer. He wants to heal you. Do you know that Jesus would get more glory by healing you than to say, well, you know, he, fin- he lasted so long, then he just left. You know, Jesus wants to heal us. Jesus wants to heal not only your bodies. There's some people in here tonight uh, that their real need for healing is emotional. They've been hurt. I mean, somebody crushed their heart, stretched their heart, broke their hearts. There's people in here tonight that are hurt over themselves. They're so disappointed in themselves. And Jesus wants to heal all of us, every part of our being. He wants to heal your emotions tonight. He wants to heal your minds. When I say that, not that you're crazy. What I mean is God wants to heal your mind so much you quit remembering all the junk that happened in your past. He wants to so heal you that you can't even remember. He'd like to give you spiritual memory loss so you quit remembering that junk that you used to do or that was done to you. You know, there's people in here, you could tell me tonight, I'm I'm just trying to be nice, you could tell me tonight who hurt you, what year it was, what are their names, where they live, and it was like 40 years ago and you still remember them because you haven't totally let Jesus heal that. Jesus, come in here tonight with your grace of healing and heal us so completely that we can't even remember who it was and when it was. That's how God did with Joseph. God healed Joseph so much, his brothers had molested him. I mean, actually molested him physically and beat him and threw him away like a piece of trash, his own brothers. And, th- and then he goes to uh, 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 Egypt, and then he gets a little bit of uh, recognition and honor, and then Pharaoh's wife, or, or Potiphar's wife, uh, says that he tried to rape me, and Joseph never tried anything. But guess what, guys? He was actually accused and convicted of being a sex offender. I mean, he went to prison for years being a sex offender, and he really wasn't. But Joseph didn't let the attitude come in, oh, I hate them, and they did me wrong, and God, you don't love me, and man, why'd you let this happen? Joseph, and he didn't even have Jesus in his heart like you do. But he said, I can't afford to get bitter. I'm going to still trust that God can still bring my dream to pass. 
And because he believed God, God started blessing him so much and put him in second command of all of Egypt. And Joseph said this, the reason I named my first son Manasseh is because God blessed me so much. That's what Manasseh means. God has so blessed me that he's caused me to forget all the trouble my brothers ever gave me. That's what God wants. That He so blesses you now, you can't even remember back there when they hurt you, that pastor who hurt you, that person that left you. You won't remember it because God's blessings are too great on you. Lord, let Your healing glory come into this house tonight. Would you stand? Father, I want to thank you for every brother and sister, every man and woman, child that has so graciously listened to your voice tonight. And I want to thank you, Lord God, that you're ready to pour your glory upon them. The Bible says this as we get ready to have some prayer. And he's speaking to you that have been in the darkness, in the mud in the grind of life. It could be the grind of religious process. You could be a Christian, come to church every week, but you're in just a cycle and it's so empty of life. And the Spirit of God is saying, Arise and shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And He will cause you to have a brightness that is even greater than the sun that's in the sky. And God, let the glory of God... Right? Would you, If you can do this with me, and it's not a Pentecostal thing, it's not a, a churchy thing, it's a, it's a like, God, I want, I want this glory. Raise your hands to Him with me tonight. And God, I receive this glory that you have ordained that would come upon me tonight and enter into my life is Christ in me, the hope of having all the glory of God activated in my personal life. The glory that heals me and frees me and delivers me and sets me free. The glory that translates me into new areas that have never, ever been touched by the dirtiness of human beings. Let that glory come upon us tonight. The glory that gives every man and woman in here a brand new beginning. I know that sometimes we're in programs where they gauge us and evaluate us in our process. And thank you for those, God. But there is a glory that even tonight you would say, I want to give you a brand new slate, a brand new beginning. And I'm not even going to compare you to where you were last week. I just want to give you a new start with me. I want you to know that my glory abides in you tonight. I just, I, I, and I know we'll have to cram in, but I, I want people that tonight, and listen to me, I'm not trying to get a big altar call here. No, 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 no. We're not even talking, I'm really not even talking about salvation. Of course, you can't have the glory of God without Jesus because the glory of God is Jesus in you. It's Christ in you. And if you don't have Jesus in you, come up here tonight with us and you can receive Jesus and He can become your glory. And He'll take away all the glory that's been inside of you and fill it with His glory. Wouldn't that be great to have all the glory out of my life and to be filled with His glory? If you need some of this glory tonight, you want the glory that overwhelms, overtakes, overrules, overrides. I mean, it, it actually says, Satan, you have no more power in this man or woman's life. You're done because my glory is for them. If that's you tonight and you need that or you need it for your family, I want you to just come up here uh, as quick as you can. Come on up. I want the glory of God in my life. I want the glory that causes me to, to tr be transfigured beyond my own abilities, my own skills, my own weaknesses. I want that glory that causes me to live in a new supernatural realm of God. I want the glory that resurrects everything that's died in me, my hopes, my dreams, my calling, my confidence. I want that glory tonight. I want that glory to cause that to be resurrected again. I want that glory, hallelujah to God, that changes me from 
being so weak and powerless. I want that glory that makes me become powerful again. Come on up even closer, guys, if you would. Step, there you go, because more is coming. I want that glory, God. I don't want the glory of man. I don't want the glory of the four-square gospel. I don't want the glory of our, our ministry that we're in. I don't want that glory. I want your glory, God. I want a new glory that's never been touched by man's hands. A glory that proves how great and how awesome, how holy you are. And God, I want that glory that frees me from me and lets me become what you've always called me to be. Come on, there's more yet that I think are going to come up, and that's okay. That's what we need. We need. I want the glory that frees me from always going through the cycles of patterns of failure and shame. I want that glory that sets my feet on the rock to stay this time. Some of you are saying, well, I, I, I want to do that, but I'm afraid. What if God doesn't do it? No, no, no. God will do it. You need to come up here. You need to just come up here. God's not a man that he can lie. We are, but he's not. I don't know what all your reasons are and what you need. But I think we could all receive that divine, miraculous impartation of God if we'd just start believing. Jesus, all the glory that you are is what I want. Jesus, you're the Lord. By the, you know this, he's the king of glory. So, so there's nobody else that has any glory that matches his. He's the king of all the glory. And he's the Lord of glory. And I want to thank you, Jesus. I want some of you up here at this altar to begin to release and give to him who you've been, who you are, and what you've done. I want you to release it to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I want to thank you for a new glory. This is the day of glory. This is the day where all shame leaves. No shame. Lord, you said you'd build a wall of fire around me. This is in Zechariah 2.5. You will build a wall of fire around us, and you will put your glory in our midst. You will put your glory in our midst. Lord, I thank you for the glory of God in this brother's life, in the very center of his life. Glory glory, glory, the glory, the power, oh, the honor of God, oh, the virtue of God, the presence of God, the peace of God, the love of God, the joy of the Lord, the anointing of wisdom and understanding. Let the glory come and enrapture us right now. Let the glory come and overwhelm us, overwhelm us. That means let your glory be so great that nothing of us stands in the way anymore. We have no resistance. We have no arguments. I want you to say to God, I'm through arguing with you, God. I realize you're right. You're God and I'm not. I give you my life. I give you rights to put your glory in me. Let your glory change me into whatever you've always wanted me to be. Let me not judge it. Let me not define it. Let me not describe what I want. Lord, for once in my life, let me let you bring your desires to me, not me tell you what my desires are. Let your desires come in my life tonight, Father. Let your desire and your glory come over all of our family members, the ones we've been weeping for and crying for and, 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 and just been just so enamored over the bad stuff. That's, God, let your glory come right now over every one of them, wherever they are tonight. It doesn't matter where they are. They could be in a hellhole somewhere. They could be in a house of ill repute. I don't know. But wherever they are, let your glory, let your glory come into that place and saturate it. Let them fall under the conviction of God's presence even right now. Oh, Jesus. With some of them, it isn't let them fall under conviction out of guilt. Some of them, you want to be so powerful in their midst. You want to show up like the angels of, of ministry, and they'll be so overwhelmed. They'll fall on their face and say, oh, God, how great you are. Let your glory come over our loved ones tonight. Let your glory come over our cities tonight, over our workplaces tonight. Lord, heal us from just being employees let us become agents of ministry in the workplace and let God fill that place with His glory. Lord, our home has been so dysfunctional and people have been just at each other and arguing so much and 
cutting each other down. God, let your glory come. Let your glory come into our house and fill that place with a new awareness of the presence of the most holy God. What's your name? Yeah, Brittany. I, I, I should have recognized you from last. I, I don't know why. You just, every night you look more beautiful, and I just, I, I knew it. You are my daughter. Oh, you're their daughter. I ain't, she ain't my daughter, she's saying. I'm their daughter. I know you are. I know who you are. Father, thank you for Brittany. Thank you for a glory that's going to follow her all of her life. There's a virtuous glory of Jesus that's upon her. And it's a glory that will just always protect her, even from the attempts of an enemy to come against her and to somehow throw her off track. God, in her heart, she loves you as much as anybody in this room. But I want to thank you for a glory that comes to bring an honor to a person that you have uh, personally uh, culminated her life in your hands. You've not let people... Uh, uh, twist her life around, but you've kept your hand on her. And I want her to have a new confidence about the future that you have for her. And God, we can't make that future. We can't tell her she's got to do this, this, or this. And even, even the parents, we can't do that because you have a special calling on her. And you'll reveal it and you'll show it. And you'll bring it to pass, God. I just want to thank you for the way that you keep healing her and, and touching her and speaking to her heart, even in the private hours. Even in the hours of the wee, hours of the morning, God, there's been times where you'd speak to her. And I want to thank you for clarification for her in her life because she's at that stage of life, God, where in her choices of life, she, she, she wants to go your way and follow you. But God, take away any kind of fears or apprehensions or even, uh, even doubts. Any confusion, God, I thank you that you remove the enemy from being able to even come and influence her in any wise. The enemy can't threaten her. The enemy can't accuse her. The enemy can't even hassle her. I want to thank you for this woman of God. And I want to thank you for what, what we will all witness even in the years to come of what a great work you're not just doing for her, but through her. We just praise you for it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I love you. I love who God is in you. Praise His name forever, guys. Father, we thank You. We thank You for the glory. Oh, the all-powerful, holy glory of God. Why don't you sing this chorus with me? I think we even have it. We might have it. I don't know if we have it on the screen or not, but it's an old one. You would know it, but let's just sing about it. Look at that. Oh, the glory of your presence. Sing it to him. We, your temple, we give you reverence. We give you reverence. Let him do it now. So I'll rise to your rest and be blessed by our praise as we glory in your embrace. Now fills this place. We'll sing it one more time, but listen to, to the one place it says, So arise to your rest. What do you think that means? It mean, Yeah, yeah, it means when you let God accomplish everything He wants in your life and He sees you full of Himself and you're free from demonic powers and stress and 
and oppression and depression, when he sees you're filled with a new confidence and a joy, when he sees that his has really been complete in you, he's able to. Corey, I want God to be able to rest tonight in me. I want him to do so much in my life that he doesn't have to think about me tonight as far as trying to work anymore tonight. God, I want you to get a good night's rest because you've done such a great work inside of me. Let's sing it again to him and, and, and just love your Lord like you never have before. And just say, God, you know, we always ask you to give us a good night's sleep and give us a good night's rest. Now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. You know, God, tonight... May Bill and I have let you do so much work in us as you look in us. You're able to say, I can rest. Do you know that when God formed Adam, he knelt down by that lifeless shell of a man? He was just a shell of a man, brother. There's people moving around today that are just shells. They're like that walking dead thing. But when God formed Adam, what's your first name? Come here, Willie. I love Willie. Come on up here with me. Willie's my brother. When God formed Adam, the Bible indicates, you've got to understand word pictures, that God knelt down by his creation. And then he breathed into him. Brothers, when God breathed into Adam, he didn't just give him breath. He breathed himself into Adam. Please understand that God breathes himself into you. He's not just the God that's way up there to heaven that you don't think he hears your prayers half the time. He's a God that is inside of you. He breathed himself into you. And the Bible indicates through that word picture that God actually knelt down by Adam when he became a living being. And I'll say this carefully. He worshiped Adam. Now, be careful here. He didn't worship Adam because Adam was a man. He worshiped. He saw himself in Adam and he could worship himself. God would like to see himself in you a little more these days. He'd like to look into you and not see fret and anger and frustration and bitterness and unforgiveness and fears and prejudice. God would love to look into Willie's heart tonight and my heart tonight and say, wow, I see myself. God, I want you to see yourself in Willie tonight in such a way that you don't just see Willie, but you see you. Let's end it with this prayer. Stay up here with me. Let's let you put your hand on yourself like Mitch is already doing. And I want you to just in your own words, you know, you don't have to copy me, but God, I, I, I give you permission to breathe yourself into me. And God, I want you tonight when I lay my head down on my pillow, wherever it is, I want you to see yourself in me. And when I get up in the morning, God, I want you to see yourself in me. And when I have to look at those stupid bills that come into my house, I still want you to see yourself in me. Father, we just thank you now. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor. But thank you for your graciousness. Thank you for the hearts of your people to be so gracious to want everything you have and not push or pressure. We thank you that you're a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And we can't wait to enjoy the benefits of all the rewards that are coming our way. In the powerful name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Well, you've already lost an hour of sleep tonight, right? Don't forget, Don't forget your clocks tomorrow in the morning. I want to go ahead and remind the congregation. Everybody listen, please. Crystal River Foursquare. Tomorrow after service, we're having a spaghetti dinner. You don't have to bring anything. You don't have to cook anything. If you want to bring garlic, bread, whatever. If you want to bring some pies, go ahead. But we're going to go ahead and do it after service tomorrow. And the Jenkins will be here in the morning for their final service. So we love you. God bless you. Love one another. Amen. Thank you. Let's give the Lord a hand.